Two people wanting to buy, one rabbit. I love C10 trucks. C10 trucks sell great. I've been selling C10 trucks since I was probably 15, 16 years old. So they always sell good. But in the last five years, they've gone insane in value. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably already know that. Shore bed Chevrolet trucks are just hot. Extremely hot right now. So naturally, that's what Rabbit wants to sell. You know, so I've had a pretty good run on C10s here lately. I had a nice 67 patina truck. Uh, LS, four wheel disc brakes, 20 inch American racing wheels. Just a good looking truck sold to a guy in North Dakota. Well, went out and bought another truck. Found me another C10, you know, just a nice clean C10. But this C10 had problems though. I like problem child vehicles. And uh, I love selling things that other people can't. You know, it's just kind of like a little thrill for me, you know. A buddy of mine calls me up, he knows I'm looking for a C10. He says, I've got one I've been trying to sell for two years. Can get a bite on it. I said, I love check it out. So I went over and looked at it. It was a sky blue 69 Chevrolet short bed pickup. You know, just clean short bed. Had a nice set of mags on it. It was lowered down. Nice insides. It was patina painted to look like it was rusty. And it did a wonderful job. Actually, the company that painted this truck and built it built custom motorcycles like an Easy Rider magazine and all that stuff. Like these guys are talented and the, the work that was done on was beautiful. And you know, so from 10 feet away, this looks like a rusty truck, but when it's actually really a slick truck that's been painted that way. So it's kind of neat because you're not married to the patina fab. You know, you get tired of this, you could scuff this truck down and shoot it back slick blue and you've got a nice truck. So I kind of like that. There was only one problem with it. Had a really nice small block Chevrolet in it, you know, rumpty rump small block. I mean, just a fun little black mark maker. I mean, just a great truck, except for one thing. Like every artist, they had to sign their work and they painted their names on the doors of it, like this big with skulls and smoke and fire on the side of it. Nobody wants to marry a girl with some other guy's name tattooed on their back. This is what's turning people off this truck. No one wants to buy something with somebody else's name on it. This is the reason used trapper keepers don't sell. So I'm like, all right, what do you want for your truck? We start going back and forth on price. And I bought the truck and I bought it at a great price. You couldn't remotely build this truck for what I paid for it. So I got it and brought it home, drove it. The truck will run, it will absolutely fly. I mean, you know, built well, tight, just a good driving old truck. Now I gotta figure out how to get Picasso's signature off the side of this thing. And the only catch is they clear coated over the top of it. So I called my painter friend. Now keep in mind this guy's been trying to sell this truck for two years. He's had it online for sale. And this guy moves cars. He's not playing at it, he's moving. I called my painter buddy up and he said, you know what? I could take that stuff off of the doors and re-clear them, you'd never know it. I said, you know what? You got you a job. So I drove it over there to him. I dropped it off on a Friday. I picked it up on a Monday morning. And sure enough, it's like it was never there. And it, it, it blended all the patina, gorgeous, airbrushed everything back. I mean, this guy knocked it out of the park. Well, driving back from the body shop, you know, I'm no sucker for a good photo shoot location. I passed this really nice church parking lot. I said, shoot, I whipped the old C10 in there, got the old iPhone out, started taking pictures of it. You know, took some really good three quarter shots and things of that nature. And everybody asked me all the time why I take pictures of my cars in church parking lots. Well, sometimes you need the Lord's help, you know? So we took some pictures of it. I got back to the shop. I went ahead and posted it on a few just a few different websites, things like that. Didn't think much about it. Really wasn't trying that hard, just got through it out there. Within five hours, I had two people that were coming to look at this truck. And it blows my mind how fast people were falling in on this truck. This truck has been for sale two miles down the road for two years, and not a soul's looked at it. Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants it. And the thing that tickles me is actually one of the people coming to look at it, it was posted still on the site from the guy that had it the last time. Kind of tickles me a little bit. And I'm asking $1,000 more for it than he was, by the way. These guys come down. One guy's coming from Charlotte. It's going to be his very first hot rod. That's what he's looking for. And of course, me explaining this would be the perfect first hot rod for him. 
And uh, so he's excited. Him and his wife are riding down from Charlotte. Well, then we have a guy from Spartanburg, South Carolina, that owns a chain of Mexican restaurants, and he's coming down to look at it this evening. So I've, now I've got two coming. I'm thinking well, one will be, be there about 5.30, the other will be there about 7. Be perfect timing. They both show up at 6 o'clock on the dot. They literally pull in behind each other. A Toyota 4Runner and a, the nicest 454SS Chevrolet truck you've ever seen come rolling in my parking lot. So I have this Spanish dude gets out of the 454SS truck. He walks around it. We've got the husband and wife out of the mama wagon. Get out and get out. And they start walking around the truck. We're in my shop. It's just me there. Two people wanting to buy one rabbit. They're walking around. I show them the features. I pop the hood. I open the doors. I walk around it, show them everything about it. They're in love. They both like it. All right. So I've got Mr. Taco leaning against the back of the truck. That's the name of his restaurant. I'm not racist. Leaning against the back of the truck. And he's thinking. I'm over here at the front of the truck with the husband and wife team. And they're thinking. And I can see the look in his eye. I've got him hooked. I'm not so sure about Mr. Taco. So we're going back, forth, back, forth. I'm to the point in this sale that I don't want to lean against the door because the paint is still tacky on the side of it. So I step away and then basically I'm just took the mentality like you guys can fight it out or fuck it out. Just dust yourself off and pay me when you're done. So I walked away. The Spanish guy walks up to me, makes me an offer on the trucks about a thousand dollars less than what I was asking for it. I walk over to the couple and say, listen, this is what he offered me for it. Are you guys interested? If not, I'm going to sell him a truck today. They said, we'll take it for what you're asking. I walked over and told him, said it was good talking to you. Thank you for your offer, but they bought it at full price. He left and I sold that truck in about four hours and 45 minutes. I could not get my phone out fast enough to text the guy that I bought it from. And the all types of son of a bitch I was after that. But hey, when you're good at what you do, can't help, don't hate. VinWiki is proud to be partnering with Mobile App Hero to continue changing the way we look at documenting automotive history. We're working with them to bring updates to our mobile and web-based app, so stay tuned to their social media and ours, and keep telling the stories of all the cars you love.